the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. I still have from a three stack still two remaining. They're badly damaged, but they also badly damaged the enemy. And as you know, both destroyers and cruisers are way more expensive than submarines. Luckily, I've upgraded them to level two. If you look at their stats, they deal 12 damage against ships. And I had four of them, so that's uh, pretty impressive because it's a total damage of 52 hit points in one single shot. And it's gone. My subs are dead now, dead in the water, but at least I have dealt a ton of damage to Poland. Also here, I have been uh, scouting with my plane I've revealed here an artillery stack. It's good stacks for Comiteran Doctrine. I mean, he gets the bonus for anti-tank, he gets the bonus for infantry, uh, his artillery gets a bonus too. They're in forests, so in the forest his uh, infantry and anti-tank gets a bonus. There's no way I can attack him head on in the forest, I would lose. Same here, so he has, in total, he has eight artillery so he outguns me as well so i can't attack him for the moment he has a ninth artillery who is joining up here so this one i'm gonna try to take out with my planes and then he also here has a light tank and there's also a stack over here that pulled back about eight units that are there so i need to wait to attack because i need a little bit more artillery for the moment I have a 6 artillery with a 7th joining up and I've got in Leningrad in 1 hour 12 minutes another rocket artillery and as he has almost exclusively unarmored units and artillery is unarmored too with the same amount of artillery I'm gonna deal more damage to him so in an artillery versus artillery fight I will be in the advantage if he attacks me while I defend in the forest, I'm gonna be in the advantage too. And with the fast units, I'm gonna be able to go through here, through Polatsk, through Lida, to attack Vilnius, or to even go all the way to Warsaw. Because I don't think he has enough troops behind his lines to stop a stack of four armored cars and four motorized infantry. These are going to be my shock troops. I'm going to try to overwhelm him. From the looks of it here, Vibetsk is empty, which is great. I'm just preparing myself, making good stacks, that if I have to attack in melee battle, I'm gonna be able to do so. Poland has not yet an idea what is coming for him. He doesn't know that a large stack here is going to be disembarking. He will soon figure out, but it's gonna be, he's gonna be caught between two fires. He is trying to protect his coast over here and over here against invasion. I guess I can assume that also here in Mamel there are probably gonna be units, but we're going to figure out in the course of the day or tomorrow. All right, we are now one hour into day five. As you can see, Southern United States over here has landed in Sahara. Spain has taken over three cities of Morocco, but Casablanca has rebelled on a day change. Algeria has won the better of the war. However, he's gonna get trashed by Spain, or at least I hope he will, because you never know. Algeria has had uh, large losses. Spain hasn't had any, and as Spain is Axis and Algeria is allies, theoretically Spain should win. However, here we have Canada, who has now also landed on the mainland of the UK, and I can imagine that very soon France and Canada are going to be at war. However, France wanted to try diplomacy because he's not ready, but if he's not gonna act soon, he's gonna give the time to Canada to establish a foothold on the European continent, and that is the last thing that we need. Italy is not that active. He ha still hasn't finished taking his part of the half of Germany. And then speaking of not very active, we have got 
Poland was not that active, who made a couple of mistakes against Sweden. Most of his navy got destroyed. I've started attacking as well because we need to move fast. I started attacking Poland first because it was planned like that to do so, but mostly because yesterday evening both Turkey and Romania have simultaneously attacked Ukraine and Ukraine was not at all prepared for this and unfortunately as he was not prepared Romania and Turkey were able to advance fast and my worry is that as soon as they have taken out Ukraine that both of them will attack me. So it's a race against time. Sweden and me, we need to, uh, to destroy Poland as fast as possible so that we can fight Romania and Turkey together. Fighting Turkey will be more difficult because its core provinces are far away, but Great Romania is manageable. Most of his army is here in Ukraine, so if I can attack his army in Ukraine while Sweden is hitting him in Romania, we should be able to cut Great Romania in his Achilles heel before Turkey is completely able to deploy against us. But then again, we also have Yugoslavia, which is an unknown factor, but I can imagine that both Great Romania, Yugoslavia and Turkey have an unofficial coalition, just like I have done. Knowledge is power, so we're not gonna show our cards too fast. And uh, I've took a couple of provinces here, most is empty, but I found the first Polish stack. Luckily for me, Ukraine, before he gave up, he sent me a couple of resources and he also gave me shared maps. So I was able to see all of the units or most of the units of Romania. As you can see here in the screenshots, he is overstacking, but he also has a fair amount of rocket artillery and medium tanks. And this is a very dangerous combination for me because uh, I'm testing this new strategy where I'm making stacks of armored cars and motorized infantry to move very fast. But those units are vulnerable to medium tanks, of course, and to rocket artillery. And I have no anti-tank units whatsoever, as I haven't had the resources yet to make attack bombers. So uh, this is going to be a rough fight for me. We're gonna see what is going to happen and I've noticed in the research tree that I made a very big mistake. I wanted to make um, railroad guns as soon as possible, but with Pan-Asian Doctrine, you can only unlock them at day six. However, Axis Doctrine, they get a bonus. Not only is the range longer and they deal more damage, but you can already unlock them at day four. I didn't notice, so I didn't research them. And even though I didn't have the resources as you can see they are very expensive this is like the perfect unit to deal with heavy armored units and to deal with any units i need railroad guns and i need them fast so i'm very sorry guys but i'm gonna use a bit of gold i don't know how much it will be 2627 well that will be the entire income of 20 hours of ads so yeah i'm gonna use the gold guys sorry all right it is in a research it's gonna take me one day and two hours to research this now i have to wait and save resources because this is a crazy expensive unit it's gonna cost 2500 manpower it's cost a lot i'm gonna start saving up and I forgot to show you, my artillery stack is finally complete. I've got now five anti-air, I've got five artillery, five rocket artillery. So this stack has perfect damage distribution. I have 10 ranged units, I have 10 melee units, among which one is a scout unit, and both the infantry and the armored cars are defensive units. And then the five anti-air, are both good against air and also armored units. So this is actually the only unit I have that can count heavy armored units a bit, but it is not enough. I'm sending it towards Kaunas, who only has three artillery, so he's gonna get killed rather fast. And he made a mistake. He should have put his troops here in Vilnius, because Vilnius 
is his core province and in your core provinces you get a 15% bonus. So if he would have made his last stand over here in Vilnius, he would have dealt 15% more damage to me. That's his loss on my win, too bad. Then here in the south, close to Warsaw, four tactical bombers are quickly shredding this small stack here. It's one armored car and one light tank. I guess this might be the 17 large unit artillery stack of yesterday. I'm not quite sure, we will find out soon enough. 